No. Are you doing drugs? No. Okay. Well, what do you, what do you do? How do you get money? Um, I live off of my cousin and um, my friends and off of other people. <laughs> Some mooches. Yeah, but huh? but I mean, you, you physically, they just lend you money, or do you do you panhandle? I panhandle and they lend me money. All right. Stephanie, I, I don't think you should contact your mom unless you're, A, willing to reconcile with her, or, B, have established something independent of her that you can rely upon and call your own. Because otherwise, it's going to be just chaos when you call her. All right, I Stephanie. Huh? All right, let me, let me explain something. Okay. We got a couple of uh, guys with 70 years of college under their belt in the room, but it's a genius that's talking now. <laughs> okay. So here's the thing. Uh, you're not going to get what you want from your mom. It's going to be Probably disappointing. Not. Probably not. Uh, it, in the movies, everyone sees the light and turns a corner. In reality, they just get worse. Or, best, at best, just sort of deny what went on in the past. Right. right. And, and whatever it is, crazy it, stepdad's still there. It's, it's unsatisfying. And mom is still the person that marries the sexually abusive boy, you know, dad. Yeah, you got a lot of energy going into thinking about what, what could be done with mom. Uh, that energy should be going into what can be done with Stephanie right now and right. tomorrow. You need to get a job. You need to just get some kind of job. As a matter of fact, I'm going further in a job. You need to sign up for the military. You need to get you need to get in a structured not, environment. Not funny. You Be serious? You got to get your ass kicked a little bit because yeah. you're basically like a feral child. Yeah. And oh, I think I got my ass kicked enough by my mom. No, no I'm not the, talking the, about the, verbal and sexual abuse. I'm talking about a di. Hitting, hitting a wooden spoon in a trash can at 6 a.m. and getting your stoned ass out of bed to do some push-ups and some chin-ups on the obstacle course. Yeah. You need you need. Give me that. your mother effing shoes! Give me yeah. your shoes! Yeah. Yeah, that's scared straight, actually. <laughs> but, Stephanie, yeah, yeah, you do need some structure. You might want to throw yourself on the mercy of Department of Social Services or somewhere you can get some re maybe vocational rehabilitation. Help get set up because you don't know how to do this. You've never yeah, done it. That's why Adam is saying the military. No, but 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 let me say, military is not a bad idea. By the no, way, no, it's it, it's not at all. Here's here's the thing: when you're uh, dumb and you're depressed, you you're like a battery that has uh, no life in it, and you just walk through life. You sort of sleepwalk, bumping into things, asking for handouts. You you become everything becomes about survival. Yeah, not about thriving, but it's all about surviving. You need to be thrown into some environment that has a ton of structure because if you think about what success is and what successful people do, everything is always structured for Internally, them. Internally, yeah. Always structured. Their family unit has structure. Their schooling has structure. Their, their church has structure. Sports have structure. Whatever. Yeah. Cheerleading. It's all structure. You're at 18. I Listen, I grew up with a bunch of these people. They've never seen any structure, and they have no idea how to do it. I wonder if countries that have mandatory military uh, obligations have as many homeless people and panhandling and that kind of thing. No, it's an, it's impossible. And you can... Never, no, never, no one ever brings that up. But that, I, that's, that's, yeah. but a lot of the homeless that you go to Italy are all gypsies, so they're... They're not citizens. They're, they're not citizens. Yeah. And usually the people who uh, have to join the military, anybody with any brains gets out of it somehow. Either they fake an illness or they leave the country. Right. That's uh. what we got here, except for you don't have to do it. Stephanie. Yeah. You just, uh, you need structure, sweetie. Um, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Uncle Cole is right on this one. Now, listen, I, I, I know you'll fight it with every fiber in your soul because uh, that, to, to, to a guy like Drew... We went out to dinner with Drew tonight. It was, it was 9 o'clock. Drew was like, what, what's going on? What are we doing? What are we doing? Where are we going? I said, well, here's the thing, Drew. The, uh, the studio is uh, 13 minutes from where we sit. So if we leave now, we'll just get there at 9.15. And it's about a minute and a half later. Drew's like, what are we doing now? <laughs> well, we're going to sit here and talk. Well, why, why aren't we doing something? See, Drew, you, without straight, you're, you're, I'm going to put it in Tom. You're like a, like a planet that would just spin out of orbit. You, you yeah. need your gravitational pull yes. of structure yes. in order to stay yes. in your orbit. Otherwise, you would just spin out. Or at least that's the fear. The reality is you wouldn't do anything. you just sit there my, my with a couple of people and have a conversation for another 18 minutes. But your, your mind has got to be racing. Like, this is insanity. What are we doing? We're not doing anything. A Adam's your son. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Not S-O-N. Be careful with him. <laughs> S-U-N. And Drew, Drew, you got to there with Drew, too. Drew uh, eats his food like a, like a grouper. Eats, eats like a giant sea bass, like a sucks, uh, eats sucks. a smaller fish. So his food is completely evaporated within 13 seconds, and now he starts tapping his, his, his fork on the table. What are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? I'm waiting for my salad. That's what we're doing. 
Relax. True. All fired up over there. Stephanie? Yeah, I'm here. All right. So you're she depressed. Needs a dose. She needs a dose of what I have. You, you, you just, I'm like the multi orgasmic female. I've yes. sucked all that up. You and need some other structure. people need some of what I have. You really yeah. you need job core. You you need the job military. Core is good with too. You need you know, to go sign to yourself up for something and go do it. I tried to get job core, but my mom would have signed the papers. You're eighteen now. Go tomorrow. <laughs> and by That's the not way, funny. let Come me on. tell you something. I know, Atten- but- hold on. Attention all idiots. Don't give us lame excuses when we're ten times as smart as you are. It's You're 18. Not. You're emancipated. Go sign Go sign your papers. Tomorrow. All right. Good girl. Yeah. Okay. Go to Job Corps. Just go do it. You need You need structure. I'm sorry for the hand that then life you, has dealt you. Then you call control. your mom. Then you call your mom. When you're in a position that you have a life, you call your mom. Okay? Well, I mean, Job I, Corps. Kinda, I wanted my mom to be part of it. You know no, what I mean? I, I no know, Stephanie, that's your, that's your pathology talking. She, she, it's going to be very disappointing trying to get her, drag her along into something that, that's yours. Your mom's, you just, you're, here, listen, Stephanie, your mom's not a good person. You you potentially are. Let's not end up like your mom. Well, okay. Let's go to you know, Job Corps. I'm thinking because, okay, my mom had 10 kids, right? And 10 kids. 10 kids. Yeah, 10 kids. Oh. It's funny because her thing is once you're 18, you're on your own. But I tried, like, all my mom's kids, we try to get her to see that she has, if, even if I turn 18, she has to do more that. She has my little brother and my little sister, you know? Right. And then it's funny because the other day, um, me and my sisters, we were sitting around the table and we were thinking about the last, the, the first time my mom cussed us out, you know, not the, not the first time she, like, took it to a party. All right, hey, Stephanie, Stephanie. Yeah, I'm, I'm job, here. I, listen, I, I don't want to hear anymore. Just go to yeah, job. Yeah, that's all. Or, you're all completely all. focused your on your mom. you got to focus on yourself. Don't get not, pregnant. This is yeah, not Stephanie and mom. This is Stephanie. Go. Uh, go how, uh, Drew, how much have your parents changed? Or how much you, have you been able to change them in the last 30 years? No, no, no. Zero. Or have my kids changed me? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Impossible. Right. It's impossible. Whatever your parents were when you were nine is what they are at nineteen, at twenty nine, thirty nine. Unless, unless somebody gets some treatment. I mean, we 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 treat parents. Oh all the time. yeah, I mean, look, they could they they could uh, stop uh, huffing copier toner or something. But other than that, their basic but, cons- construct, yeah, their personality is not right. going to change. But even when we have addicted children, we end up treating the parents and trying to bring them along, and they change in, in treatment. She's got but, ten kids; she doesn't care about. No. You're uh, number eight or you're number six, whatever you are. Whatever. Join the brood of uh, folks you don't care about. You'd be better off with a, you know, uh, German Shepherd as a mom. Now, Tommy, see, you've got this auctioneer over here. If you actually want to talk, you got to just jump in and just talk over all right. Don't yeah, worry about it. Just, just pile on. Don't just listen to him. Pile on. Okay. okay? I, I'm just enthralled. No, no. Stop that. <laughs> yeah. Stop that. That will not do. problem. Enthralled. Not do. We need no. you jumping all over him, right? He's fine. No, and this is good. What I wanted to learn was how much you actually make panhandling. I mean, do, is it $10 a day? Is it $5 a day? Is it? Well, it depends. If Drew walks past you, it's zero. Come on. Stephanie? Yeah. You can never get a, right, a good answer, but how much do you make uh, doing the panhandling each day? Uh, depends on who you get it from. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Love line call. Thank you. There you go. Well, Tom. Yes, there you go. Is, That's uh, the ultimate love line experience yeah, yeah, right yeah. there. You've had no yeah, yeah. different than any of your calculations uh, <laughs> yeah, you've yeah, done on yeah. a computer. It's just an exact number. <laughs> she even got down to the tenths of a penny. And you know what? We go back and ask her, you'll get the same response. Yeah. Yes. Depends. Yeah, I always, I always like that. It's like, what kind of weather is over there in Southern California? Depends what day it is. Okay. Fantastic. Question answered. Check that box. Let's keep moving forward. Yeah. Well, so, now that we're all experts on the income of panhandlers, we can move forward in our but life. you know what's crazy? It, it, they have to, if you ask them to generalize or give a pro, an average, they yeah. won't. But if you ask them a specific, then they won't do that either. They'll go back to the general. Right. Mm-hmm. All I, right. I, so it I, depends. I'm just shocked she can use the phone. It knows all the numbers and be able to press the buttons. And Oh, yeah. That, that is, uh, well, you can teach anyone to do that. But she... She, it depends who goes by. You get one lump. Okay, she has a I'll take a break. Okay. Tom Burbine is uh, here tonight. He uh, sounds like uh, one of the largest dealers of custom band, bands in the Inland Empire. Tom Burbine's custom vans and RVs. You're the guy all oh, echoing. It's dealing days at Tom Burbine. And then you just stand Dealin there. Like, days. Dealing days. <laughs> you just stand like, I, this kind of thing I'd see Stone at like 3 in the morning, you in front of a custom van. You talking about making fun of SUVs, talking about Captain Chairs. Yeah, jumping from one fan to the next. 
I always like when they do. There, there is a guy who does the custom van sales at like two thirty, three in the morning out here. And the, my favorite is the uh, Stooge accomplice, uh, accomplice, where he goes like, Cheryl, try to get into what? Try, try to get in that SUV. Go ahead and try to get in that Explorer. Oh, Tom, again, try to get in. And she's like bending herself into a pretzel to get into the back of uh, Ford Explorer. It's like now get into one of our custom Ram vans. It's beautiful. It's spacious. But it's like when the five foot three chick can't make it into the four door. 